Welcome to LC Screen Talk. My name is Larry, and this is my recap and review of the 2019 Academy Awards. Tonight was the biggest night in film where we hand out the awards for what are supposed to be the greatest achievements in cinema for the last year. And like every year, there were some ups, there were some downs, there were a surprise or two to be had, but what there wasn't was a host. But before we get into all of that, you know how we like to do here. We're going to go ahead and start off with the fashion talk. Let's hit up that red carpet and go over the best and the worst dressed of the evening. We're going to go ahead and start off with my least favorite looks from the red carpet. And many of these actually kind of pain me to say, including and maybe especially this first one, Ms. Angela Bassett. Oh, the color is right. That bright pink looks beautiful on Angela Bassett. That dress, however, not beautiful at all. The fit and the fabric just do not work. This huge puffy sleeve was not it. It just, it looked saggy. It looked too tight. It wasn't flattering on her. This weird slit on the side. Almost nothing about this dress looked good. Thankfully, all of this was right, but with Angela Bassett, all of this is always right. Brian Tyree Henry, what in the Hugh Hefner kind of mess is this? That jacket looks like a old smoking sports coat mixed with your bathrobe. A very luxurious bathrobe, but still a bathrobe. The rest was fine, but it just up in here, especially, the, the jacket killed this entire look for me. I was not a fan. Gemma Chan, usually you are a fashion icon, killing it on these runways. I don't know what you were killing tonight. If you were killing fashion, it was only in the literal sense. The fit of this is horrible. The fabric looks cheap. It looks like you sewed several bed skirts, like pink Ugh, bed skirts together to get that effect on the bottom. It just, it, I thought it was terrible. Laura Harrier, I didn't want to give you too much because you're new, you're young, you know, you might not have that coin or those connections to get the, the good stuff. But this, this was not it. This two-piece ugly mess. I don't know what this was. I really would have preferred you to walk into Macy's and get a prom dress than this. Wanted Linda Cardellini for killing an entire flock of flamingo to make this hideous abomination of a dress. What in the Sesame Street kind of mess is this? I honestly think I would have found this to be okay if the top were different. <laughs> if the top did not keep those big ruffles. It wouldn't have made my best dress, certainly, but I don't think it would have been on the worst. But just having this overbearing weighted, messy, ruffle, pink monstrosity. No, all the way head to toe, it just, it did not work. Like your character from Green Book, serving up some mob wife realness with this makeup. It's a no, ma'am, no. My Rudolph, you were aware you weren't running up to the grocery up the street, right? Like you were coming to the Academy Awards. What is this? like a fancy house dress almost. It's terrible. I hate this fabric. I hate this pattern. It is so grand matronly. Not even just matronly. This is like great grandma's wardrobe here. And then you add the kind of natural face, the slick short hair. It really aged her. It, it wasn't a good look. Ooh, I love Sarah Paulson, but oh my gosh. This was one of the most hideous things to walk down that red carpet at the awards tonight. I, I don't even know what to say. This is absolutely terrible. Like, what is this weird bubble top? It's like a deflated bouncy ball that she just like stuck onto her body real quick and then pulled the skirt up. I mean, it is so bad that I can't even really comprehend what the designer was thinking, doing, anything. Like, oof. time to put down that LSD because I don't know what this is. Tessa Thompson also falls on the higher end of the worst list, but it's still the worst list. It's up here. Fantastic. She looks so good. But that middle peplum just wasn't working. It also looked cheap, honestly. 
It looked like she got Christmas garland, like gold Christmas garland, and just wrapped it around a basic, ugly, poorly shapen black dress. It just, it didn't work for me, Tess. I'm sorry. You know I love you, girl. But this, this wasn't it. So, hey, De Chanel, what are you even doing here, first of all? When's the last time you were in a film? I guess that explains this fashion, right? Designers weren't lining up at your door for the Oscars, I guess. But, whoo! This, like, wrinkled, stiff bottom fabric is terrible. That little tiny black top is atrocious. The entire look of this dress is just, I mean, wretched. It's horrible. And then we're going to cap this off with Laura Murano. I just, I don't get it. I don't get this color combination. I don't get that humongous bow on the back. I don't get this fabric combination particularly. Like, what in the world is this? There's not even any design to the point where the two fabrics and two colors meet. It's like literally just tacked on there. It's terrible. I, uh, ugh. This whole look is just a hard, hard no. Whew. Yeah, there was a lot of terrible looks. But... There were also plenty of looks that I thought were inspired and very nice. Starting off with Aquafina. I dug it. I dug this all silver sparkly suit. I loved this big rufflage. This is how you do like a glammed up female suit for the red carpet, I think. She just looked awesome. It fit her edgy style. Loved the little handbag purse. Looked great. Uh, Billy Porter was everything. Do you hear me? This is probably my favorite look of the night for sure. I adored Billy Porter's half tux, half huge exaggerated ball gown. This is everything to me. Simply perfection. High fashion, high class, everything. I don't think we give Chadwick Boseman enough credit of being a male fashion icon. He always takes chances. And I think every single chance he's taken at these big award shows has paid off for me because this is awesome. I love this coat. I love this like scarf embellishment down the middle, the long coat down the back. It fits in theme with a very Wakanda-esque feeling without being on the nose. It just is high fashion beauty to me. I think this is a great look. Chris Evans was looking like a snack at the award show. I love this mint green with the white, with the black. Of course, this is always fantastic. And then when he's being a gentleman, it all just came together to be a top-notch look. Emma Stone makes it onto my best list because I think this is how you execute her style very well. It has that same kind of like flapper, no shape dress that just kind of like falls straight down with no cinching. But it's elevated. It has all of these beautiful embellishments. I love the sleeve. I think I could have done with a little more structure here in the middle. But this is her style. And I think she looks gorgeous in this dress. And this is the best that I've seen her look in this awards campaign. Oh, Glenn Close. You came for that Oscar tonight, girl. And this is an Oscar winning look. I have to give it to you. You have not been turning looks that I love throughout the award season. And you finally did. <laughs> But I think this gold drama is just everything. The big cape moment. The color is gorgeous. Her hair is beautiful. I love these earrings. Glenn, at least you looked amazing. Jennifer Lopez just killed it. I mean, this is like sex pot disco ball realness. And I lived for it. I loved the pattern within this like just solid silver dress. It looks gorgeous. Like this shattered disco ball almost. It's great. Of course, her face is beat. The hair is laid. Everything about Jennifer Lopez is stunning, as she usually is. Does Jennifer Lopez ever disappoint on a red carpet? Lady Gaga looked absolutely fantastic. This is probably my favorite of her looks on her Oscar campaign. Just a very simple, but very high fashion, elegant dress. I loved these little hip moments that came out. I would lived for these gloves. Her hair though, oh, and her makeup. The hair and makeup really just make this outfit. The jewelry here, it all works. She looked stunning. Movie star, classic movie star, stunning. Stefan James killing it in this red suit. 
I honestly lived for the three-piece suit, the bow tie, the white, and then you had those white shoes, and this pin here. Oh, it all just came together so well. It looked great on him. I loved this red suit. And this time, I have to give it to Spike Lee. I loved this purple suit too. It is signature Spike Lee. What I loved most was the love-hate nod to do the right thing. The film that should have won Spike Lee his first Oscar. It's a signature Spike Lee, but it's done well. I love the purple and blue combo, clearly. And I dug it. And then we have Nicholas Holtz, who did just a straight up black suit, head to toe. But I live. I love everything that was going on up here with this moment. It just worked so well. The wraparound of that suit jacket I thought was so good. He was pretty much channeling like a modern day version of his character from The Favorite and I lived. I thought it was great. Michelle Yao looked like a classic beauty. Absolutely stunning in this gown. I love everything about this. I think she looks perfect. Like this look here to me is perfection on Michelle Yao. Very clean realness to the T. I can dig this too. <laughs> And then finally, Drag Queen taken over the runway with Ms. Shangela and her date for the evening, Jennifer Lewis. They killed it. First of all, Shangela's dress is impeccable. This dress is high drama drag queen, darling, going to the Oscars. She looks classy, but she still has that drama, that flair, that personality of a drag queen. Add to that this beautiful makeup. The mug is right. That hair, though. Oh, that hair is everything. And then Jennifer Lewis in this gold suit getup, also looking fantastic and fabulous. I thought that they killed it. So now on to the ceremony itself. Well, I have to say, I think every year we should go without a host. Not gonna lie. I really enjoyed the flow of tonight's show. I don't think we needed a host. We were able to get four out of the five song nominees to perform. Plus we had that uh, queen performance so we could have easily gotten all five in. We presented all 24 awards. We got everything we needed to get into this award show and uh, almost stayed on time. But really, it was a really successful show. I didn't find myself wandering off and getting bored. I wasn't cringing very often. But I just really think that it, it worked. It showed that we don't really need a host. We don't need these gags constantly. The entertainers themselves, the presenters, they bring up jokes themselves and they give you those moments of levity enough that is there a need for a host in the modern day? Mm, my opinion is no. This award show was a great test drive to ditch the hosting plan altogether. So... I thought it worked great. It moved the show along. The pace was brisk, and I don't know that we need a host ever again. The Queen did open the show with Adam Lambert as their current frontman. It was fine. Um, I don't know why they didn't perform Bohemian Rhapsody, but they did perform, obviously, two of the, like, pump-up Queen songs, and we all love Queen music. Regardless of Bohemian Rhapsody as a film, regardless of them coming to the defense of Brian Singer and all of that drama and mess that's happened around this film and the production of this film. I mean, we all love Queen. We all love Freddie Mercury, certainly. And this music is iconic. I personally love Adam Lambert, and I thought he was looking like a snack up there like he always does. But they had his mic way too low. Uh, at some point, you can even really hear him. Honestly, I wish they could get Brendan Urie, my number one music bay from Panic! at the Disco, because I kind of think he's a much closer representation of a modern-day Freddie Mercury, but that's just me. But I love Adam Lambert. Um, it was fine. It was a fine way to kick off the show. It wasn't great. It didn't blow me away. But everybody in the audience obviously loves Queen, and they were getting their life. Then we go into Amy Poehler, Tina Fey, and Maya Rudolph. If we're going to get hosts next year, I think these three put up a pretty good audition tonight because that opening segment they did was hilarious. Honestly, let's just put them three out to kick us off and then no host for the rest of the night, just like we did tonight. They landed so many jokes, so many impersonations. I thought it all just worked so well. They were funny. They were tight. They were succinct. I thought it was a great opening number from them. 
other noteworthy presentation moments. First of all, Melissa McCarthy coming out as a mixture between the favorite and Mary Queen of Scots to present best costume design. It was everything. First of all, I lived for this <laughs> over-the-top exaggerated dress that she wore. It was so good. And revealing that little short Queen Elizabeth hair was too much, but also everything. But they were just so funny. I thought she killed it. She was hilarious. See y'all, Melissa McCarthy is still funny. Stop hating so dang much on this woman. I also lived for Tyler Perry throwing shade at the Academy as he presented Best Cinematography. I thought that was fantastic. Trevor Noah and his speech, his introduction, throwing shade at Mel Gibson. Oh my gosh, I just about died. I loved all of those Wakanda jokes. I thought he was so good. You speak one of your native languages, Trevor Noah. It was great. Like his little speech was fantastic. I adored Amelia Clark. She looked great as well. I didn't love her dress, but I didn't hate it. I adored Amelia Clark's speech talking about Queen Daenerys Targaryen, Stormborn, Mother of Dragons, a million other titles. Not having nothing on our girl RBG saying, if you need a dragon, hit me on up. I loved it. I thought it was such a wonderful, playful, but respectful speech for what she was up there to present and a beautiful nod to RBG herself. It was wonderful. As for the performances, which is what Amelia Clark presented, I thought Jennifer Hudson sounded nice. A little bit strained, but she sounded nice overall. I thought the set was absolutely stunning for all of the Oscars, to be honest. I thought the whole production looked beautiful. But I lived for this long, dramatic cape coat that Jennifer Hudson was wearing. Her whole outfit was great. The song, eh, it's fine, but I think her performance was nice. Bette Midler... I also thought killed it. I really, really wish, though, she had worn a Mary Poppins-inspired outfit for this performance. As it was, she sounded beautiful and really emoted through the song well. So I thought she paid great respect to it. Uh, the song from Ballad of Buster Scruggs was fine. I don't know. I thought it looked cool. The stage looked cool. But the performance was nothing special. Probably the worst of the night for me. And then we get to the best of the night, and that was definitely Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper, who just killed it. I mean, let's call a spade a spade. This is the best I have heard Lady Gaga sing this song, honestly, uh, since at least the film itself. The Grammys, mm, shaky. That time where she brought him up on stage at her concert, eh, shaky. But this, she was perfect. Oh, at that piano, she looked gorgeous. Bradley Cooper sounded very nice. Well, what is going on, y'all? Am I the only one who's just kind of like, I don't know. I don't know how to feel about this very strange Bradley Cooper, Lady Gaga thing going on. Like, first, she brings him on stage, and then she's literally on her knees, like, looking up at him. What What the hell was that, first of all? I, I found that performance, particularly, to be so creepy with her getting down there like that. I, I didn't like it at all. I'm just going to be real with y'all. Um, and they've continued into this performance where it got so damn intimate at the end. I think everyone was waiting for the kiss. Like, we're just like, oh, well, just do it. Make out sesh on the stage. Like, royal wedding, here we come. What? <laughs> so what's going on? Like, is this a thing? Y'all just smashing on the side? A romance is born. What is going on? Gaga. Gaga. But regardless, the performance itself was beautiful. The camera work was amazing. The just look of everything was beautiful to match the wonderful singing performance. Then I just want to touch on somebody who pretty much stole the whole night for me, and that was Spike Lee, because his reactions and interactions from the audience were everything. When they brought him up during that Aquafina presentation moment, and he just like was having none of it. He was not amused. He was not having it with this little girl named after some damn water bottle. He's like, okay, what you do that for? <laughs> I fell out. I thought it was so funny. And then his interaction with Samuel Jackson, them kind of just going back and forth teasing. I thought it was so funny. And then we get to Barbara Streisand and their call out about coming from Brooklyn. It was everything. Spike Lee was everything. And I'm so glad he was nominated. And of course, 
So glad he finally won his Oscar. We couldn't get through this video without talking about him and Samuel L. Jackson. First of all, Sam Jackson getting pumped. Like he was so excited when he opened that envelope and got to read out his friend Spike Lee's name. Finally getting his long overdue competitive Oscar win. And then when Spike Lee ran up there and jumped on him, I was done. I thought it was so good. So fantastic. Spike Lee won the whole night for me. I kind of wish we would have just stayed with him. We should have given him all of the awards. It would have been everything. <laughs> and there was a lot of momentum tonight. Women really steamrolled through at least the first half of this awards broadcast. And it just highlights why we need to keep costume design, hair and makeup, short films, particularly in the broadcast because so many females that work in the industry get a shot here. They get, this is where they get their chance to shine because, well, we refuse to nominate their films that they've directed in Best Picture or them as directors in Best Director. So this is their chance to shine, to do the thing. There's no cinematographers, there's no female editors. So we can't start cutting categories like hair, makeup, production, costume, short films. None of that can get cut. Otherwise, we literally see no women get to take the stage, except for acting. Thanks to Black Panther, Black women came out and won big in categories that they'd never been nominated in. And they won for costume and production. For the first time, we had Black female winners there. Marvel Studios took home its first ever Academy Awards tonight and ended up with three of them through Black Panther, which was a huge achievement. I will say, though, it's very strange to me. Marvel Studios has never won for Best Visual Effects? Really, Academy? All of these years? And honestly, it didn't happen tonight. And this was a good chance with Infinity War being the feat that it was and the Academy, <laughs> clearly, not having it with First Man. The fact that Infinity War lost out to First Man, I, I don't know when they're going to get this good a chance to win again. But, the, but hearing over and over, first Black nominee and now first winner at the beginning of this award show, thanks to Black Panther, really just cemented why it was so important that this film was nominated as heavily as it was tonight. It really confounded just what a cultural movement and how important to the entire film industry Black Panther was. So kudos to Black Panther. I'm so glad to see it win three awards tonight. So let's kick off the actual awards themselves and who won and all of this fun jazz. I didn't do great on my predictions this year. <laughs> a lot of my second places won. I actually went into the night knowing I was going to lose three. I lost all three to the one I thought was going to win, but so be it. I could have had 18. Instead, I have 15. It has not been so great the last couple years. I loved hearing Benicio Del Toro come up and talk about <laughs> walls won't stop creativity importing, and I thought that was actually a really beautiful and wonderful thing. And Alfonso Cuaron just gives great speeches. It was wonderful to see him win for director and for cinematography and for foreign film. One of my favorite wins of the night was Best Animated Feature, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, getting that victory. I knew it was going to win. It was a virtual lock heading into the night. But that acceptance speech was so amazing about seeing yourself in these animated films, hearing your language spoken in the films, and, you know, we all could be heroes is, is the underlying message there in the film from Stan Lee and in their acceptance speech. It was really a beautiful speech and one of the highlights of the night for me. I was so excited. And Spike Lee was definitely my other favorite win of the night. I was so pumped, so excited he finally got his Oscar. That pretty much overshadowed almost everything else that happened in the night. Spike Lee's speech was everything. Of course, he had to shout out, do the right thing, uh, showed off his love-hate. Of course, Spike Lee's going to bring some controversial messages, obviously get real political, but it's Spike Lee. Honestly, this is why he probably hadn't won to this point, but get over it, Academy, and I'm glad you did, and finally gave him a rightful award. I was really sad by the lack of love for the favorite. I mean, it literally only won one award, which we'll talk about in a second. 
but they just, they didn't catch on. There was no love given to the favorite. And that was, that was disappointing. And I, I was actually pretty shocked that they pretty much just snubbed it all the way through. Going one for ten. So let's talk about the big ones. Regina King, right on script. I loved the love she received. I loved her heartfelt, genuine speech. And of course, I loved Chris Evans, like, being Captain America, helping her up those stairs. Everything about her win was beautiful, and it made me love the fact that she won just a little bit more. Plus, I love Regina King. I have been a fan of hers whew, forever now, it seems like, from way back, way back. Um, so I'm just happy to see her finally get respect as an actress and be taken seriously. So hopefully she gets some more really great roles from this and doesn't go down the path of, like, getting pushed out. Mahershala Ali, supporting actor. We knew it was coming. He was great. It was a nice win. Had nothing against that one. I will say, though, speaking on those two winning those awards, it would be nice to have more representation and get more wins in lead actor and lead actress. We're seeing a lot of wins, in particular, in Best Supporting Actress for Black women. But I want us to evolve into the lead categories. As we saw this year, where were they? <laughs> Not even Black Klansmen could get a Black lead into nominations. I mean, come on. I think it's been since 2007 since we've had a Black male lead win. And I'm pretty sure it's still only Halle Berry who's won for lead actress as a Black woman. So we still have some ways to go. Well, then let's talk about lead actress, which was the big shock of the night. Olivia Coleman upset Glenn Close. And I was pretty ecstatic because I do think Olivia Coleman gave the best performance this year in the category. I thought she was so flippin' good and I was so excited. Her speech was just as endearing as we thought. I loved her calling out Glenn Close and talking about how much she loves her. Her kiss to Gaga. Everything about this woman is amazing. She deserves everything. Give her all of it. <laughs> However, I was actually pretty sad for Glenn Close. I didn't think I would be this sad for her, but I am. Even though I think Olivia Coleman's performance was better, and I'm super happy she won this award. I want Glenn Close to be getting meaty, hefty, deep roles from here on out, because we need it. She needs an Oscar. She should have won this Oscar, uh, what, like 30 years ago or so? Yeah. So this is way past due. She was robbed herself of an Oscar already. And I just, it would be a real shame if someone as talented, legendary, influential, amazing as Glenn Close doesn't win a competitive Oscar because she more than deserves it. Let me get to Best Actor. Who in this speech really got under my skin. I was not happy with it. <laughs> First of all, Let's just talk about the package that introduced the five nominees. Bradley Cooper, Christian Bale, Willem Dafoe, those were the first three. They had these great, deep, evocative speeches and moments in their film that were shown for their reel. We get to Viggo Mortensen, he was the bookend. He even had a really nice moment, a transformative moment. But then they show Rami Malek, and they literally show a moment of him Lip syncing? Not showing any emotion, not really acting. Lip syncing. Okay. And then he won, as we all knew he would. But it was just glaring with that video package. Like, what in the world is this? <laughs> then he gets up there and goes on this speech, which is supposed to be kind of powerful, empowering. But he gets to a sentence that really just irked me and has irked me and really made me not want to see him win this award because I really think they failed on every level when it comes to sexuality and Bohemian Rhapsody. He says, we made a movie about a gay man. Everything about that sentence is wrong. Literally everything about it is wrong. <laughs> no, you didn't. No matter what you say, no matter what... Anybody that is not named Freddie Mercury says you did not make a film about a gay man. You made a film about a bisexual man, period. 
the record shows he was bisexual. I don't care what this woman says. I don't care what your screenplay says. And I don't care that you thought it appropriate in your film to have another character tell Freddie Mercury what his sexuality was. And for you to go up there and say it like that, I was already done. Second of all, though, even if Freddie Mercury were gay, you didn't make a film about a gay man. I mean, I guess technically you did, but you made a film about Queen in general with Freddie Mercury at the center, as he should be, as the frontman of Queen. You sucked all the gay out of there. There was no gay affection, no gay love. It was treated as a disease in the film. The bad gays that just spread AIDS and rip your career down. It's not a film about a gay man. Let's just say that right now. All, everything about that sentence is wrong, and it's really what's kind of like irked me about everything having to do with Bohemian Rhapsody as we lead into award season, because nobody here is seeming to understand the problem of how they depicted sexuality at large. The bi razor that took place, the Freddie Mercury sexuality period, and then the way that gay people and the gay culture were depicted was horrendous. That made me mad. I wish I didn't have to hear Rami Malek give that speech. I'm kind of sad because before he started talking throughout award season, I was not happy that he was winning because I think there were much better performances. But I wasn't mad about it. But each and every time he gets up here and saying things about Brian Singer and never knowing, and he was just so focused because he had the spirit of Freddie Mercury in him. Like, hearing all this nonsense, it's too much. Rami Malek, I would suggest you step away from the microphones for a while. I know it's your Oscar win now, but distance yourself from all of this and just head down, get back to the grind, because people loved you going into award season. I think people still do love you, but right now, a lot of us that are a little bit annoyed. Also, Academy, really? We gave Bohemian Rhapsody Best Editing? Who voted on this? Like, I'm serious, who voted? Somebody who's never seen an edited piece of work in their life? Because Bohemian Rhapsody was by far, like far and away, the worst edit of the nominees and shouldn't have even been in the category. Like, I mean, it was, it was not good. So, yeah. Get to Best Director, Alfonso Cuaron, perfect. And then Best Picture. I knew it was happening. I said it in my predictions video. If Green Book wins for Best Original Screenplay, it's winning for Best Picture. It won both of those awards and it is what it is. Here's my problem here. As we saw on the stage, I know Octavia Spencer was an executive producer on the film, but it was literally her and Mahershala Ali on that stage who were people of color. The rest was a sea of white people on a film about racism titled after a pivotal book in the South, written, distributed by and for black people to avoid being killed in a highly toxic South in the segregation era. And I thought Green Book was fine. A very nice film overall, but there's been so much said about the Vellalonga family <laughs> in general and their racist past uh, and their inappropriate Twitter past, but also on them not really consulting or working with Dr. Shirley's family. And then you see Literally everyone behind the scenes of this film is a white person besides Octavia Spencer. And it's like, I mean, this is very old school racism movie. This is good old black magic man teaching the racist white dude how to like people of color. And we've seen it. It's so old school. Everyone said it is Driving Miss Daisy version 2.0. And when you have these more evocative films, that speak on the black experience from the black experience like black Klansmen that was nominated or the overlooked blind spotting that should have been nominated it's very disappointing to see green book come away with the win it wasn't the worst of the choices i ranked it six in my ranking so i had two films below it but it was just a very underwhelming win an expected win to some extent of course many of us were hoping roma would pull off the victory, but these old men in the Academy would not let a Netflix film win, and certainly not one in Spanish. Oh, God forbid. 
that old Mexican filmmaker and his Spanish language film Love Letter to Mexico. Ooh, and he put it on Netflix? No, we're going to put that last, even if we love it. Preferential voting system definitely helped Green Book get this win. I know plenty of you be excited. If you love the film, that's great. I was hoping we would push forward a little bit more with the Academy this year. That's it. That is my recap and review of the 2019 Academy Awards. What did you think of the awards? How did you do on your own predictions? What were your favorite moments? Who do you think was the best or worst dressed? And how did you feel about these winners? Let me know all of your thoughts on the Academy Awards in the comment section down below or you can hit me up on Twitter. If you like this recap and review, make sure that you hit that like button down below and subscribe to the channel so you are always up to date on our latest videos. I love you all so much for your support. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.